What is going on, everybody? This is Pie Guy back here again, coming to you with part three of Retro Pie for Dummies. In this video, we're going to be going over how to install and set up themes on Emulation Station, as well as scraping uh, what that is, and we're going to go over three different ways to do it. Um, so let's get rid of this pretty boring background here uh, and get some more themes going. So to do that, you're going to want to go into Retro Pie and Fourth option down from the top is Emulation Station Themes. So let's go ahead and go in there. And this is basically just giving you a warning. If you're running 10 or more systems, you should only use certain themes. You guys can go ahead and read through that on your own. Um, I'm trying to do this for time's sake and not keep you guys too long. But you can go in here and you'll see they come with uh, over th about 30 themes in here already that are just waiting to be installed. I went ahead and put a few in ahead of time just for time's sake, but they, they do go pretty quickly uh, to install. If I'll click on uh, click on Metapixel here. It says not installed in parentheses. I'll just hit enter, and you can see how quick it just zips right through. It takes a few seconds. Some of them take a little bit longer, but nothing big. So let's go ahead, uh, go ahead and look through. Check out all the ones you're interested in. When I started, I, I installed them all, and I went through one by one and saw which ones I liked. Um, so to actually apply the themes you now have installed, go ahead and hit the start button. And you're going to go down to uh, UI settings, user interface settings. And you're going to go, you can either hit left or right there. I just hit enter and I have all the themes that I installed from that menu. So I'm just going to show you my two favorite. Um, first one is Tronky Friend. I don't know who names these things. Uh, but go ahead and select whichever one you want hit enter and then go ahead and hit escape or back and this happens often some of some of them will actually get the theme running right, right away and other ones gray out like this that's totally normal just go ahead and go ahead and hit uh, quit and restart emulation station and it's gonna boot up and your themes gonna be running so you can see this one basically just has a up close HD shot of each original console which I think looks pretty sharp what I'm not crazy about is when you go into the menus, it just has this kind of a gray look to it. Um, so let's go ahead and put in another one. I'll show you my other favorite one. Uh, UI settings, go to the bottom. And I like simple dark. I think that one's pretty sharp. So I'll do that. I'll hit back. And this one I have to restart again. And it's going to load right up. And this one basically just has a blurred image of a notorious game from each console. And I like this writing better. It's the dark image with the uh, teal writing. I like that. Um, that's me. But um, one other quick setting under user interface I just want to point out to you is the transition style. So by default, yours will say fade. Um, I'm going to go into any game here. And all it does is just fade to black and the game launches pretty boring um, if you change it let me jump back out here oh, okay I had to hit escape on that one um, if you change it to slide and this is gonna work well after we scrape too but if you change it to slide and there's a there's an image there see how it zoomed in it'll zoom in right on that image um, and it's gonna look sharp so just wanted to point that out to you as well so let's move into scraping for those of you that don't know what scraping is it's basically a way of taking a pretty boring menu with just the name of the game on it and turning it into something like this where you have an image of the game you have a quick synopsis of it the publisher and all that stuff so you, you got you get a lot of information on it so it just spruces everything up it looks very sharp um so there's three different ways we can actually do that and I'm going to go from the slowest way to the fastest way. And I'm going to show you all three because really, ultimately, you're going to use a combination of all three. So let's do Bomberman on 64. So you select, this way is individual. So select whatever game you want to scrape. Um, press the select button and go to edit this game's metadata. And you see all this stuff says unknown. It's like a big mystery. Doesn't does It just knows that there's like a title there. It doesn't know anything about it. So... When you go ahead and uh, select scrape, and it's processing right now, it kind of freezes up, like you can't move your directions, that's normal. 
Um, you are going to need an uh, internet connection. <clears throat> Doesn't matter if it's Ethernet or Wi Fi. But um, what it's doing is running the title of your game versus an online database. And you can see here it returned three different results because there is, I guess, there is three different Bomberman games on 64. Um, and the title of my game is at the top. So I know that this is just a regular Bomberman game. It's not Second Attack or Arcade Edition. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit enter on that one. And you see it's working. And it's kind of cool too. You can preview the pictures on the left. And uh, the synopsis is also scrolling up automatically there for you. So now I'm back to this screen and all this stuff is filled in now. I want to go ahead and hit save. And now when I go through my menu... The game is there, the, the picture's there, all the information, and it just looks a thousand times better than before. Depending on your theme, uh, the game might be in a different position on your screen, but you're going to have like the all the good stuff there. So, so that's method one. Um, the second method is to do multiple games at once in Emulation Station, which is where we are now. So to do this, you just hit the Start button, uh, go to Scraper, Scrape from the Games DB. that's what you want, that's the online database. Um, you can leave the ratings on, that's fine. Scrape now. Only missing images, you don't want to do all games, you're just repeating your, and taking longer. So, if you want to do all your games, you leave it on, on all the systems, it'll by default select all the systems you have going. I only have five right now. Um, I'm just going to leave it on Atari, just for time's sake, I'm probably not even going to let this run, but I'll hit back. User decides conflicts, I want to turn that off, uh, and I'm going to hit start. So what user decides conflicts really is, it's it's just, um, it'll scrape automatically, move on to each game, but in between, if it has multiple results for the same game, that means it's going to ask you, is this the right one? Like Bomberman had three results, it'll say, which Bomberman do you want? If you turn that off, it'll just say, this one's the closest match, let's move on to the next one. So that's way faster than sitting there for each one. It's just, you know, I guess it's cool if you got like 15 games or something, but if you got a lot, like my larger images have thousands and I'm not about to sit there and do all that. So you can see it's moving to the next screen. It's already on the second of six games in the in my Atari ROMs list. And it is processing, it looks like it's not, but it's going. Um, I'm actually gonna stop it just for time's sake. But if you let that run, it'll get through the whole list and that then it's gonna give you a summary of how many games were successfully scraped in this case, I, I cut it short so it didn't get any, but that's fine. I just want to see, want you guys to see how it works. Believe me, you'll get results. Um, so the third method to go ahead and scrape a, a mass amount of games, and this is by far the best one, um, is, well, it's a scraper designed by a guy named Steven Self. Um, but to use it, we can't do it from inside emula Emulation Station. We got to jump out of it. So go ahead and hit that start. I go to quit. And you want to go to quit Emulation Station. Yes, really. This is going to take us to the, the underlying system that everything's running on. Um, and this is a cool screen, too. It gives you some cool information. Um, the temperature of your, uh, your core, uh, your memory used, how much you have left, all that good stuff. So... If you notice, we have our cursor flashing there, and this is where we're going to be. Um, I'm going to leave the list of these uh, commands in the description, but these do have to be typed exactly as you see them. And I'm on a mini keyboard, so sorry for the slow typing. But the first one is going to be CD, space, RetroPie, capital R, capital P, hyphen, Setup with a capital S and enter and it's going to kind of spit that back to you in purple lettering that's what you want if that doesn't happen you just type something wrong just type it again no big deal uh, the next line is going to be sudo space period forward slash all lowercase retro pi underscore setup dot sh so go ahead and hit enter when you type that and it's going to take us to the retro config menu so this may look familiar to you 
But again, this isn't going to work if we go into it through emulation station, so that's why we took the back door. So you want to go down to the fourth one, which is configuration tools. And on the right hand side, you want to look for the name Steven Self, Self with a PH, and select that. If it's your first time doing this, it is going to have to install. It's going to take like 10 minutes or so. Just, you know, take a break, get a cup of coffee, whatever. Um, if you're doing a mass scraping, just go ahead and do scrape all systems and, and let it run. Depending how many games you have, it could take a few minutes to an hour, you know, depending. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to do one system. I'll just pick Nintendo. I have a handful of games there. I hit start to put the asterisk there, and then I just hit enter, and it's going to do its thing. Imagine this will probably take like 30 seconds or so. You can see the names of the games popping up there too, so you know it's doing its thing. Alright, so that took about a minute or two. It wasn't too bad. Um, it says ROMs have been scraped. I'm going to hit OK and escape, escape, escape. It's going to take us back to this black screen. And you're just going to type exit. You could also type emulation station. They do the same thing. But it's going to bring us back into ES. And now I'm going to go over to Nintendo. And you can see we got some results here. Doesn't do everything perfect. That's the thing. And that's actually why I showed all of them. Because none of them do it perfect. But between cross-referencing, you'll get them all. For the most part. Um, usually what I do is, first, if I'm doing like a mass scraping, I'll do the Steven Self Scraper. Then I'll come back and I'll run the ES Scraper. And um, even sometimes if, if there's a game that I think is titled right and it's not getting, it, you can run the individual Scraper again and it'll probably get it. It just needs a second look. So just wanted to go over that and show you guys. Um, they're honestly the two easiest ways that things you could do, I should say, that will spruce up your whole look to Emulation Station. I mean, it's so much better than just that black and red look that comes default. So I wanted to share that with you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, if you have any requests for future videos, let me know. I'm always looking for new content to shoot. And um, appreciate you guys watching. Please like and subscribe.